Greetings, friend. In the Sudoku World Championship in 2006 in Italy, final puzzle required a very specific strategy that the competitors wanted banned. They thought it basically amounted to guesswork. Well, I'm here to tell you that this puzzle from the 2023 Sudoku Grand Prix requires the same strategy in order to solve it. I'm going to show you what that strategy is, and then you can decide whether it should be banned or allowed to remain in competition. Click below if you want to give it a go. And with that, it's solving time. So we want to start off noticing that we have a lot of restrictions in column seven and columns two. In fact, there are only two cells remaining. You might notice here, you're just missing a one and a seven in column seven. Well, I have a one in right there. So this has to be a one and that has to be a seven. We come over here, we're also missing a one and a four. Since we just marked that one, this has to be your one and that has to be your four. You always wanna look for the greatest amount of restrictions when you're trying to solve a puzzle like this. And then you might notice when you put these two fours in, we're gonna be able to do a little cross hatching and see the only place left for four in block nine is right here. Great. And now we can kind of move up a little bit. You might notice there's quite a bit of restriction here in row six. You only have three candidates available. And since you have a five right here, a five can't be there. And you have a five right here, the only place left for a five is right there. So we can solve that for a five. And then you can look up and notice that you have this eight cutting across row three, this eight cutting across row one. We can solve for an eight here. This is probably a little easier in the eyes to see what's going on down here in the top and the bottom. And we just want to do some cross hatching to be able to solve a few cells before we get to that band strategy. Okay, we just solved an eight. We have another eight in column five. Only place left for an eight in block five right there. After solving that eight, you might be able to notice across here that there's only one place for a two. Can't be here because of this two. Can't be here because of this two. So you can solve that cell for a two. And then something else that creates quite a bit of restriction is you see how this two cuts across and this two comes down. So you have a pointing pair of twos right there. So a pointing pair means that the twos are limited here in block eight to the same row, row eight. So they can't be anywhere else along row eight because if they're outside the block, there'd be no place to put an eight here, excuse me, there'd be no place to put a two here in block eight. So that's a pointing pair. Other thing you might notice is that these cells are restricted to a two, six and a nine. Well, we can remove the nine from right there. We can remove the six from right there and then we can remove the two because of the pointing pair. And then if you look and see what could be in this cell, what well, can't be a one, two, three, four, five, seven or an eight. This has to be a six or a nine. And what that means is now these three cells form a naked triple. You might notice that two, six, and nine are the only three candidates that can fit in those three cells. Whenever you have that situation, that's a naked triple. And what it means is that two, six, nine cannot be anywhere else in block eight. You want to learn more about how naked triples work along with pointing pairs? Well, click on the pinned comment below and you can download my free Sudoku solving guide. I go through all of that plus give you diagrams, definitions, and videos to check your knowledge. Great. Now that you've done this, we can limit and see that there's only three cells remaining in block eight. We need a three, five, and a seven. Well, having a five and a seven right here, so this cell we can solve for a three. And again, this naked triple, this is not a banned strategy, but it's gonna help us make progress at this point in the puzzle. And then you can see the seven comes down and there's only two places for a seven in block five. So that's another pointing pair. And you might wonder what the little sevens are. These two little sevens, that's called Snyder notation. So anytime in a three by three block, you only have two places to put a cannon, mark those spots. In case you solve one cell, you can solve the other right away. And when you use them for claiming and pointing pairs, like we just did, it's going to help us solve other cells. In this case, since we know a seven has to be in one of these two spots, a seven can't be there. 
The only place left to put a 7 in block 8 is right there, which means this is going to be a 5. Nice. So let's remove this, these colors, and we've created another restriction here that's common in championship puzzles, and it's not going to be our band strategy. You notice how there's a 2 and a 5 in row 7, and then the 5, and you have a pointing pair of 2s in row 8. That means the 2 and the 5 cannot be in row 7 or 8 over here in block 7. So the only two places left for a 2 and a 5 are right there. That makes them a hidden pair. When candidates are limited to the same two cells, that means they have to be one of the two possibilities for those cells. And you can eliminate any other candidate that might go in there. This is going to be helpful for us because now you'll see how an 8 comes down column 3. This 8 cuts across row 8. We can solve an 8 now because an 8 can't be in this cell anymore. And so we made another solve. And it's about this point you're going to get a little stuck. There's no other easy solves to do. And so when you get to this situation, you do want to start looking for restrictions, either single candidate or double candidate. In this case, you see how we can put a 6, 9 there, naked pair, because there's only two possibilities left in row 7. You can put a 6, 8, 9 down here to finish out this 6, 8, 9 naked triple. And I can mark Snyder notation there to kind of help us out. That's not going to get us to solve. So the other thing you want to do is you want to look for where there's restrictions. You see you have seven candidates filled out in row two, six in row four, and seven candidates filled out in row six. This is where we want to look, and it's going to set ourselves up for the band strategy. First, let's fill out row four. You have a two, three, four, five, six. So we're missing a one, seven, eight, nine. Since so we have a seven and an eight right here, that can only be a 1 or a 9. So that's a nice little bye-bye cell, BVC. You look right here, you have an 8 and a 9. This can only be a 1 or 7. And then there's no restrictions here to prevent this any further from a 1, 7, 8, 9. Okay, that doesn't help us. What do we have here? Looks like we're only missing a 1 and a 4. And if you go here in row 6, we're only missing a 1 and a 3. Now, I want you to look right here. This can either be a one or a four. If it's a one, then this cell would have to be a four. And then this cell would be a three, and this cell would be a one. All right, I wanna highlight these four cells. Okay, so if a one's here, then a one has to be there. All right, let's get the highlights back. So I wanna show you something here. If this is not a 1, the only other possibility is that's a, it's a 4, right? Okay? So you can put a 4 there. This would be a 1. This would be a 3. And this would be a 1. Hopefully you notice that a 1's got to be there or there, right? So in either situation, if this is a 1, then that's a 1. If this is 4, the other possibility, you know, this is going to be a 1. And that's going to be a 1. Any way you do it, the 1s have to be in one of these orange spots in column one and one of these orange spots in column nine this forms a sudoku x-wing and whenever you have a sudoku x-wing and you can find one when you see that the same candidate in this case a one is limited to the same two columns in two rows then you can eliminate every other one in those columns because we just showed a one's going to be there or there in column one, there and there, in column nine. This is the band strategy. Competitors thought that naked pairs, hidden pairs, pointing pairs, hidden and naked singles are fine, but an X-wing at the time, they said that's kind of like guessing, and that's gonna slow us down. This is a speed competition. All right, but what it does for us is allows us to solve this cell for nine. And if you want to learn more about X-wings, check out my X-wing tutorial. And put in the comments now, do you think that X-Wings should be banned? Is this too tough to be put in the competition? Let me know. And while you're at it, subscribe to Smart Hobbies so you can solve X-Wings even better. So what this does for us is it's going to allow us to make quite a bit of solves. And I'm not sure if we're going to be completely done. There might be some more tricks here, so you might want to keep following along. First of all, with this 9, we can get rid of those 9s right there. 
And then what can we do? We can start solving some of these by-value cells. Since we have a nine here, that's gotta be a six. That's a nine, that's a six. All right, we can get rid of those sixes right there. Okay, that's helpful for us. And now with this six, this has gotta be your two, that's gotta be your nine, that's gotta be your six. Let's work our way up column five. What can we do here? It looks like we have all these are nine, so this has to be a nine. We're just missing a one and a four. Well, I have a four right here, so that's gotta be your one, that's gotta be your four. Nice, and with this one, now this is gonna be your seven, and then the last cell here in this called full house, we only have one candidate remaining, is gonna be a six. Nice, and now we can remove the sevens from right there, and you have a one, eight, one, eight. What is this gonna do for us? Well, you can either look at it right here and go, okay, we're bumping out the one right there because the one's got to be one of these two cells. Or you can look over here and go, the one cuts across and that's the only place left for one. Either way, you're going to solve this for a one and a three. And we know immediately the other one has to be right there because of the X wing. Okay, one and a four, eight and a one, nine and an eight. I love it when I'm able to disambiguate those by value cells. Now, you feel like we've solved most of the cells here. We've got to finish and get all the way to the end of our solving because we just put a nine here. I don't see a nine there. We're going to solve both these cells at the same time. This has got to be a nine. That's got to be a seven. Okay, looking good. And you might notice we have two fours, two fours. We can solve for four here and finish column nine now with a six. Okay, and so now I'm going to follow the sixes. Two sixes here with this six means this has to be a six, looking good. And what do we have here? We have, looks like a three and a seven. Don't have the three or seven in a spot that we can solve pretty easily. So let's see what else we can do. We're looking for a two or a three here. Well, here's my three. So there's a three, there's a two. This is gonna make this a five, make that a two. So we cleared up all of those cells. And when you're doing the pencil marking, you do want to clean up these marks so that it makes it easier to do the cross hatching at the end to finish solving all the cells. All right, I only see a one missing in column three. Great, and with these two ones and this one, we can solve for a one here and a three here, just kind of keep those clumps going. Two threes there, so I know this is gonna be a three and a seven, like we called that before. Look at these two sevens that go, this has gotta be your seven and your five, and then we come back, we notice that we can solve a five here, and our last digit is a two. Well, I'll show you how to find a single X-Wing, but if you want to see how to do a double X-Wing, check out this video. Please consider supporting me through my Buy Me a Coffee page. I really appreciate it. It motivates me to make you even better content. Thank you so much for watching.